On today's episode of Turnaround Theory, we'll watch a video about these men checking out in terms of dating and relationships, and I'll give you a theoretical thought like I always do. Join me for an all-new episode of Turnaround Theory, coming up next on YouTube. When it comes to dating and relationships, modern women are everywhere. Stay tuned for another edition of Turnaround Theory because we're going to be watching a couple of videos about why men are completely checking out when it comes to dating and relationships. And I'll give you a theoretical thought at the end of today's broadcast. Fellas, as I often say, y'all should be knowing the sand and y'all should be knowing the drill. Grab a snack and come on back because y'all just might learn something. Roll the intro. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Once again, it's your boy, Mr. Turnaround, a.k.a. Tenacious T. And I want to welcome you back to another edition of Turnaround Theory on my YouTube channel, where I give you guys a theoretical thought on just about anything. Hey, listen, if you are new to my channel, I personally want to welcome you. And if you are, in fact, a returning subscriber, welcome back. As a daily constant reminder, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my official youtube channel it would help out and it will be beneficial for the youtube algorithm and don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you my friends will instantly be notified every single time your boy posts up and upload more additional content onto the channel if you want to watch full episodes of turnaround theory there's going to be a link provided in the description box below follow me on all social media sites there will also be links provided for that in the description box as well Please don't forget to use the hashtag Team Turnaround. That lets me know that not only you are watching this episode of Turnaround Theory, but you are supporting my channel and you are supporting the content that I post up. And I might just give you a shout out right back. I hope I covered everything in this matter, but let's get started with today's edition of Turnaround Theory. Now, today's episode is all about men checking out and not deal with these modern women when it comes to dating and relationships. I want to invite you to stay tuned because at the end of today's episode of Turnaround Theory, I'll give you guys a theoretical thought pertaining to this episode. Here's a video of a young man who's talking about men are checking out and they are done leaving these modern women alone when it comes to dating and relationships so they can find peace, tranquility, and focus on them. Watch this video and I'll be right back. There's this movement going around that a lot of men have completely checked out of dating. They have stopped dating. And let me be the first one to say, I completely understand why. There are a lot of issues that don't get addressed by the mainstream simply because it's an issue that is designed to benefit men. And the fact that it's designed to benefit men, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. But when we really think about it, the things that benefit men also benefit women. But we don't want to talk about that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to focus on one side's issues and not focus on the other side. So what I'm making this video, I'm going to be explaining some of the reasons why a lot of men have completely checked out of dating. They completely stopped dating because I'm hoping that these points get mainstream enough to where the women who do listen start making changes within themselves and maybe start in influencing their friend group to make changes as well. Am I asking for a lot? Sure. But I think that it can happen. Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight-year-old? So one of the main reasons why a lot of guys have checked out of dating, at least for the average man, is dating the average woman isn't fun. Cold approaching the average woman isn't fun. Texting the average woman a woman isn't fun. It's not fun. The whole process isn't fun. There was there used to be a time where dating was fun because the person was just as excited to see you as you were to see them. They were just as excited to get approached as you were to approach them. Huh? But nowadays, because of the internet, because of people's uh, 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 over inflated value of themselves, they're playing these power games between each other. Oh, 
I like him a lot, but I have to convince myself that I don't like him so I can keep my cool and my composure. You bastard! Like, what are we talking about? Oh, I do like him. I, I got his text three minutes ago, but I'm going to wait 30, 45, an hour, two hours to text him back because I don't want to seem thirsty or desperate. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? These are the, these are the games, and these are just like the tip of the iceberg type of games that a lot of guys have to go through in order to get through this, get to the person that they're looking for. And that's when that particular word, tap out, comes into play. Move them right along. Now listen, I know there's a lot of guys that might come in my comment section and be like, yo bro, you have to make sure that you're dressing well, that work on your confidence, power through that rejection. You know what I'm saying? Be courageous, be brave, right? Be in that masculine, do all this other stuff. Listen, as a guy who, who used to not do any of those things, who then over the years became that person who was better, let me tell you this. These, what these guys don't tell you is the process is still the same. The process is still the same. Now, the, the, the BS that you have to deal with may lessen a little bit, but you still have to deal with BS. You could be the top tip top of the guy. He's still dealing with BS because what, what happens is as you start to improve your life, as you start to, to, to have more conversations, you go through the rejections, you go on dates. A few moments later. Let's say you even found out the, the, the way that you're able to sleep with women consistently, right? Let's say you got that down. What happens is your standards start to improve because you've dealt with, you've dealt with average and mediocre type of women. And you're like, okay, I'm at the point now, I've worked on my social skills, I've worked on my body, I've worked on my money, now I want a woman that reflects that. What? So that means you're constantly having to chase women who are out of your league, which I, I can't stand that term. Woo, child. Where they do that at? But women who are more on your level, and that's where, that's where it's like a lot of guys who get a bunch of girls, usually they're getting girls who are be below them. Right, girls who don't work on their social skills, girls who don't work on their bodies, girls who don't know how to be feminine. This is the reason why a lot of guys are checked out because it's like when you're I oh my gosh. I know some of you guys can relate to this. You guys ever have a conversation with a woman and she has no idea how to have a conversation? And you're thinking I I, I think to myself, I'm like, wait a minute. I've worked in female dominated places, right? A restaurant. I've worked in a restaurant. Women talk all day about nothing. All day. It's a skill. They talk about nothing. They tell stories that have no ending. I've seen women talk a lot. And when I talk to women, it's like I'm talking to a person who lacks social skills. Well, suffering succotash. I thought I was the only one that dealt with women that don't have communication skills. I'm glad this brother recognized the red flag from the jump. I'm like, how? How? A lot, a lot of, a lot of women don't have minds of their own, and it's so disappointing. So disappointing. And if they do have a mind of their own, it's usually like the most, like they, they're trying to have like this boss babe archetype that they pride themselves on having a mind of their own. It's like it's like a person who's good looking. Who, who does everything to prove that they're good looking. It's like, like we know you're good. You don't have to prove it. You know what I mean? It, it just comes off weird. And that's where a lot of these things come from. And once she starts gaslighting as a result of all of that, she becomes toxic and being a narcissist. Damn. Getting numbers sounds good in the moment until out of the 20 numbers, 18 don't text you back. The two that you set up on one flakes. And the other one shows up and it's like one of the worst dates possible because she doesn't know how to be a woman. Oh my God. There's so many, there's so many stories that I have for this. Let me tell you one of these stories, man. I can't stand this story, bro. It just, it pisses me off just thinking about it. I was having a conversation with this woman. We were texting and I, for me, my dating strategy, at least in the past, very straightforward. I talk, I want to make something happen as soon as possible. I don't want to waste time and FaceTime and call her. I'm not doing any of that. I want to, I want to set up a date as fast as possible. So we were talking, we were just kind of shooting the shit, you know? And she was like, you know, I make like the, I make like a mean burrito. And I was like, you know, I was teasing. I'm like, oh, you know, you don't make a better burrito than me. And she was like, oh, you want to bet. So me naturally going off of that conversation, I'm like, okay, you could come over and make a burrito. 
Like make me a burrito. In my mind, right? In my mind, I'm like, she comes over. We make, she makes a burrito. We taste it. No, 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 no. I make a burrito. We taste it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the person who makes the best burrito wins, right? Cute little date. The text that she sent me after I said that, she said, if you think I'm going to cook for you, you got me effed up. And she spelled out the F, F word. And I was thinking to myself, like, what are you, what? Where does that come from? And so I sent her the text back. I was like, first, first of all, I'll let her know. I said, listen, I've never been so turned off so fast in my life. And then I told her, like, I meant that you're going to cook the burrito. We're going to eat. I told her basically what I was explaining to y'all. And she goes, oh, well, I just, I said that because my roommate is the only person that I cook for. That made it worse. Because let me get this straight. You're completely fine cooking for your roommate, but you're not fine with cooking for somebody who you have the potential to be in a long-term relationship with? Tell me how that makes sense. Brother, I feel your pain. Let me tell you a story right quick that happened to me once. I once asked this girl out on a date, wanted to take her out to the Golden Corral, and I told her I was willing to pay for it. Next thing I knew, I didn't get a text back from her, nor did she call me. She just automatically just ghosted out on me, and she flaked out on me. I said, damn, that's a bummer. Lesson learned, don't ask another woman out for a date. Just take myself out on a date, and ever since then, I've been enjoying the single life. Anyway, back to the video. It made it worse. So she tried to she tried to double back. I I didn't even I can't even do it because I meant it. I've never been so turned off. And it's like, what where did that even come from? And, and it's like that's just like again that's like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this stuff, man. A lot a lot of women just don't know how to act. And again, they've been pro a lot of them have been programmed to do this. Now again, it's it's also their fault for not working on themselves the same way they require men to. But a lot of them have been told that, listen, as a woman, as long as you have uh, uh, the box, you don't have to do anything. You can just sit back and the man is supposed to, the man is supposed to do everything for you. And listen, as a man who has, has, has went from not knowing anything to going through all the knowledge, to doing all the approaches, to setting up dates, to figuring out the formula of how to getting laid consistently, that is, it's, it's, let me tell you what happens when you start getting laid consistently. A lot of you guys know this already. But for the guys who don't know this, what happens when you start getting laid consistently is you start, you stop wanting quantity and you start going after quality. If you ever follow a guy who does a bunch of approaches or players or guys who get women, nine times, every single time, every single time, those guys would give up all of their women if they found a good, a good girl to date every single time. Because we know, you, what happens is you realize when you're going on these dates, is that the average woman doesn't talk about anything. She doesn't talk about anything. And it's like, she's not, she has nothing going on for herself. And, and like I said, again, I'm talking about the average woman. I know there's women out there, because again, I've had great experiences with dates. I've had great conversations with women, right? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it doesn't exist on average. That's what I'm talking about. The average woman doesn't have hobbies. The average woman isn't feminine. The average woman doesn't act like a girl anymore. She acts like this, this, this boss babe archetype that 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 her her only mission is to make herself unlikable to men but secretly deep down wants a relationship it's it's weird it's weird and a lot of a lot of a lot of people don't talk about it and here's the thing because i've boiled it down to this and i think this is going to be my last point i beg your pardon why don't you explain this to me like i am an eight-year-old the reason why there's there's so much turmoil when it comes to dating, at least in the West, is because it's not because of the, the conscious thought of the woman, right? It's because a lot of women hold the opinions. They value the opinions of other women higher than they do of their own or the person who is trying to uh, uh, take care of them for the rest of their life. And so what happens is she may like a guy who's five seven. She doesn't mind it. It doesn't matter. He may be 5'7", there's the average run-of-the-mill guy. And she's cool with it. But the fact that she has to go tell her friends that, 
or the fact that she has to post that on the internet and receive backlash from that will completely stop her from dating that individual. Now, fellas, we understand that women will always have a preference of what kind of man that they're looking for. But when they start dealing with them pookies and ray rays and those dudes that are in the streets and those that have a criminal record in jail, they settle for those type of guys. They're prison girlfriends, they're prison wives. They can't help it, but they don't want an average man who works from nine to five. The sad part about it is women will get on the internet and start clowning on these men and dogging them out. That's where that sign mechanism comes into play. The word sign is an acronym that stands for shame, insult, guilt, and need. Women will shame a man. Women will insult the man. Women will be making a man go on a guilt trip because women always feel the need to be right. Don't go away. I'll be right back with a theoretical fault right after this. I'm a single mom with no food for my daughter. Please help me get a loaf of bread. Sad emoji with the cash app. This chick posted this and no one cared. Check it out. Y'all, this is my refrigerator right now. It's currently empty. I don't have no food. Somebody in the comments said, go sell the refrigerator. Mm. I promise, bro. <laughs> y'all don't take shit serious on the internet. Side note, y'all becoming way too comfortable with coming on this app and begging strangers to help you take care of the children that you chose to have. Then I go to Shorty's page, she over 30 years old. 30 years old online begging for money. Times are hard. You better sell that phone in your hand. That's a good idea. You better get out there and start selling it if you got to. There's a million, quadrillion, quadrillion, bazillion, mammalian things you can do besides begging strangers on the internet to help you take care of your child while she's screaming in the background. You're basically prostituting your child out for some sympathy points. Wow. If you can't feed your baby, then don't have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's always crying. And now, turnaround's theoretical thought. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what time it is. This is always my favorite part of the segment. It's time for another edition of Turnaround's Theoretical Thought with yours truly, Mr. Turnaround, a.k.a. Tenacious T. Well, I'm about to give you guys a free theoretical thought based on today's episode about men are completely done dealing with modern women. They are checking out when it comes to dating and relationships. Here's your theoretical thought for today. To all the men around the world, it's not your fault that women have a preference. They just make bad decisions and choose poorly. Women have bad communication skills. Women may beg to differ. They can comment all the devil they want, but they know it's the truth. They hate accountability. And as I often say, women hate accountability with a passion because accountability is always going to be a woman's kryptonite, no matter how you slice it. So if a woman prefers a pookie and Ray Ray, if she prefers a dude that's got a criminal record while he's in jail, then yet and still, she winds up either being a prison girlfriend or a prison wife. It doesn't matter. If she can't pick an average man who's got a nine to five job and he's trying to make it happen to make you have a better life, then chances are modern women just don't stand a chance. That's your theoretical thought for today. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for watching another edition of Turnaround's Theory with your boy exclusively on my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as a constant daily reminder, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my official YouTube channel. It would help out and it would be beneficial for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you, my friends, will instantly be notified every single time your boy posts up and upload more additional content to the channel. Until next time, I'm Mr. Turnaround, a.k.a. Tenacious T, signing off. With that being said, here's a look at a preview for next week's episode of Turnaround's Theory. Next week on Turnaround's Theory. I have seven kids, seven different baby daddies, and I do receive 3K, 3,000 in EBT food stamps. 3K in EBT a month is not something you want to flex on. That literally shows how much you cannot provide for the children you kept on having. How do you have seven different baby daddies and you were giving birth since the age of 14? I just saw a woman on here bragging about the fact that she has seven babies by seven different men. So seven baby daddies. But why is she bragging? Why is she proud of that? Because she gets government assistance. $3,000 a month, apparently.
seven kids, seven different baby daddies, 3K in food stamps. Y'all, I know y'all seen that girl that went viral. She's all jumping in front of the camera. I think her whole page is more about her 3K in food stamps, her seven kids, seven baby daddies, how she just rolling through this world, everybody mad, everybody jealous. First of all, I'm really like in shock. Like An all new episode of Turnaround Steery coming next week.